Most of us cruise through our days. We wake up and have breakfast, go to work, or if you're retired, or go to school. We just fill our hours, and then it's bedtime. And maybe we're reading, or on our phone, or watching TV, and then we go to bed. We wake up, and we do it all over again. Today I'm asking you to think about something different. What is your future self? Who, who are you becoming? Is it something that's just happening? Or is it something that you're actively creating, actively becoming? We're going to look at you, your future self, the planning, the blueprints in this definitely more on the woo-woo side of flow dreaming still kind of woo-woo. Flow dreaming, still kind of woo-woo, is just what it sounds like. An escape into the world of woo. Also, a ride into you. And how to feel happier, wiser, and more self-aware in every way. It's your ultimate journey into personal growth and inner power. We'll explore ideas like how your energy self influences the kinds of opportunities you encounter or how your personal growth can drive your business growth, or even how that feeling of being stuck is really always coming from something else. We just have to figure out what. That's right, we're a dash of woo-woo, a sprinkle of self-care, a heap of problem-solving and pattern-busting, and a giant cup of encouragement. We're going to relight so much passion, purpose, self-love, and confidence in you that you practically stagger. I'm Summer McStravick, your host, and welcome to Flow Dreaming, still kind of woo-woo. Just a warning, today's episode is not going to be perfectly produced. I'm just laying that out there. It's spring break. My teenage son is home. There's a gorgeous big ray of sunlight coming in the office doors. My dog, my cat are just, they're both laying there, soaking in the sun. My kid upstairs, the birds are going nutballs out on the, in the, in the bushes across from my home office. And of course the flight path, I'm not going to forget that. So airplanes, birds, dogs, cats, and sons may all make brief appearances today. So let's dive right on in. We are going to be talking about a concept that is in my new book, Stuff Nobody Taught You. I'm pulling a couple of ideas from the book to share with you today. Just so you get an idea of this, especially when it comes to this thought or this feeling around who am I becoming? Who am I actively choosing to grow into in my life, as opposed to just having life buffet me and push me and move me like a little leaf in a stream? No, I'm I'm actually, you know, uh, being the captain of this leaf, and (laughs) this is where we're going. So for me, that is such a key idea in my life anymore. And, you know, it, it, it transcends manifesting in many ways because... Often people think about manifesting as just making one more thing. Well, I need this now. Now I need that now. Now I need some money. And now I need a good house. And now I need a relationship. That's the incremental way of looking at things, the fill the empty hole. I want to plant a garden. I don't want to just fill gopher holes in my life. So when we talk about this future being, this future you, keep this in mind. This is the purpose. So on a, hold it, hold it, personal note. Ha, yes, that is the personal life cue music. Yeah, I told you, like this, I'm loving the new format of Flow Dreaming because uh, I get to jump in and kind of move around time to time. We're going to get back to the main thing, but... My book, this is my personal update right now. My book, Stuff Nobody Taught You, the first book 
that I have released in 11 years. I know, I know. I, it's, it's like eight years overdue, clearly. But that's a good decade of learning and understanding that I was able to draw from to create a very unusual piece of work. So I am celebrating. This book comes out April 25th. And I put together all kinds of stuff around it. So anybody, if you guys want to go look it up, go to wherever you go to buy your books, your Kindle, Barnes and Noble, Amazon, even Target, Walmart's carrying it for goodness sakes, any place you want to go. If you pre-order the book before April 25th, I'm inviting you to multiple free workshops with me, some of which are only for those of you who pre-order. You get a brand new flow dream from me, renewed and revitalized. It is just luscious and wakes up all of you, your cells, your heart, everything. And you get, oh my gosh, all kinds of other fabulous bonuses, a launch party with me, meaning we get together on Zoom and have a good time. But basically, I'll be walking you through how to use this book. It's a manual and it's based on, you guys have heard about me school, I'm sure. How could you not if you've ever heard this podcast before? But it's based on the actual teaching, the materials that I lay down and work with my me schoolers uh, in. So this book is fantastic. That's my big personal life update. I mean, I should probably have some sound effects of cheering and and party horns. Ah, maybe I'll throw them in there. Who knows? But I am so in love with this book. And um, the voice is very different than the other books that I've written. I've got out of my head completely and I just laid it out there. My stories in there, uh, a lot about my life and just what it's meant to be on a personal growth quest for 20 years, what it's meant to reinvent myself over and over, to come out of darkness, to come out of being lost, being stuck. Um, That dead end that we all reach many times in our lives, to think we never will reach that is ludicrous. We reach that multiple times, but there's a way out. And you can grab it and use it and do it. That is all laid out in a $12 book. So check out Stuff Nobody Taught You. And that is my big thing. It is a celebratory month. There you go. Now let's get into what I'm going to talk about, teach you, show you in today's episode. I want to start with this concept of future self. When you think about this person that you're becoming, you have some general ideas, you know, I'm going to be retiring someday. I'll have money. I'll have maybe grandkids or not. There's a lot of things that are fuzzy out there. I want to have a good career. I want to do something important to myself if not to the world, something with meaning. This future you is something that you can craft. You don't know exactly all the pieces that will slip into place. You can't say this company will hire me, that one won't. This is the year that I will meet someone important in my life and that's the year that this friendship will blossom. We can't necessarily describe it like that, but... We can certainly describe the feelingscape of it, right? The emotional context of it, letting life paint in the colors. Yeah. In fact, that's a great analogy. Think of it like a paint by numbers. You guys remember that when you were little, you know, you get that little paintbrush and you dip it in water and you, you put it on the paper and suddenly turned blue there and red there and you could paint. Do they still make those? I'm sure they do. Well, you're creating the outline. The outline of your life is the emotional sketch. It's what you practice. It's what you do daily, daily, if not multiple times a day, letting your mind just sort of land on this. And then you let life figure out what are the colors that will fill in the emotional parameters that you're describing. So let me break it down very practically. 
The future you is something that I have taught. I have a beautiful online course. You go to flowdreaming.com. You can find it there. It's a big part of me school. Like we get really into it. The future you is a person who, again, here is an example. Let's say I'm not a person. Let's say you, (laughs) this is you. And you've decided that you want to feel absolutely free from anxiety, free from fear, free from stress all through your life. This is the person that you want to become. That person who just kind of floats along, enjoying everything, present for everything, part of things, engaged, because there's nothing holding you back. There's no feelings of I have to, I have to, I've got to, I should, I need. All those pressures around you, money pressure, social pressure, family pressure, those are all gone. You're not going into lack thinking, catastrophic thinking. All of that is gone. Wouldn't that be a beautiful state to exist in? Every day, I mean, maybe you already are, but a lot of us aren't. A lot of us, we are pockmarked with all of these fears and concerns and feelings of pressure. I have to go to work. I have to do this. I need to, ah, ah. and it creates anxiety, it creates fear. What if it doesn't work out? What if it won't, won't, won't you know, go that way for me? And so we live kind of balancing all these have-tos and stressors and then trying to, to merge in some joy here and there, wherever it's possible. A beautifully cooked evening meal, a good night's sleep, a funny movie, time with friends. I would like you now to choose some emotional parameters. What would be an absolute and utter game changer for you. If there was a way that your future self could feel day in, day out, the moment you woke up to the moment you went to sleep, what would it be? Now, I'm going to guess for a lot of us, it's going to be what I just said, a release of fear, a lack of fear, feeling contentment, feeling uh, supported, feeling like all of my needs are met, right? That's the opposite of anxiety and stress and pressure and fear. All of my needs are met. I feel that all the time. Everything I need is here. So I can bask in the joy of the moment. Whatever is on my plate today, I'm fully there. I'm loving it. This becomes the the beginning, the starting point for this future being the future you that you are becoming. You're choosing this. This is the first big paintbrush going down. Now life is hearing this from you. When we do energetic work, we are creating a being, like creating a magnet, a big old, imagine you're a big old magnet. Now don't get all law of attraction-y on me here. Just, you're a magnet. And what do you bring in? What do magnets do? They attract metal. So you're creating a specific kind of energy, a specific you that is attracting the same. It's attracting the things that you're after. It, you, you are vibing with them. You are in alignment with them. What happens with a magnet when things aren't in alignment? Like you take two magnets and you reverse one right? And there's this active pushing away feeling. Those are the things that don't align to you. They don't even enter your universe. They can't. They don't align. They're pushed away. You're not trying to push them away. It's just who you are. They don't align. So what I am sharing with you right now, this concept, which perhaps you've thought of before, but you know, I want you to do something with it. Not just think about it, but actually start doing something. This is actually chapter 35 in my book, Stuff Nobody Taught You, where I walk you through this process. Who are you becoming? How do you become this person? Because that's the next question. 
how do I do this summer? Like, okay, sounds awesome, but how do I do it? We do it in my world through the practice of flow dreaming. We're practicing our emotional, energetic states of being over and over. What you do is what you become, right? What you think is is who you become. What you feel is who you become. Whatever you're doing right now, this very second, stop. What are you doing right now? I mean, obviously you're listening to this but you're probably doing something else too. Maybe you're folding laundry. Maybe you're walking, exercising your body. That is becoming part of you right now. It's in you. It's a memory. It's a piece of you. And it's a experience in your life. Never goes away. It's now always part of you, encoded in you. When you are practicing the feelings of the future you, you become it. It becomes encoded in you. And practicing those feelings can be as simple as you closing your eyes and pulling up what I call your emotional endpoints. This is who I am, what I feel. This is what's going on around me. I feel it. I am it. Boom. I'm creating it. Now, it doesn't mean it's happened physically yet. You've just worked on the magnet. Life now gets to, you know, rub its little bleary eyes and say, what happened? Hold on. Things just changed. There's a little more of this now in you and a little less of that. We need to shift and start aligning to the new thing. This is why I harp on having a practice so like doggedly. Do it every day. Lately, I have a a list. I'll tell you about it someday. It's a what if list. Um, And I've been reading it every morning. Wild, crazy, outlandish things. I just read it. I want those wild, crazy, outlandish things to become part of me. I want them to be embedded in my energy. Even if I am doing nothing toward getting any of these things on my crazy, outlandish, fabulous, like list of wild ideas, things that would light me up. The very fact though, that each day I'm laying my eyes on them, feeling them a little bit, is immediately cueing life around me. Hey, this is in her now. This is in summer. She's embodying. She's She held this. We can now start to match it, grow it, embroider on it, macrame on it, extend it. That's why you go into flow and you do this kind of practice. Okay, that's thought number one. But you know what? It's actually time for another little break because long monologues, dang, they get long. This one is what's turning out to be one of you guys' favorites, shower thoughts. Today's shower thought comes from yet another one of my books. This one is called Creative Flow Dreaming. Now, this is a book that almost nobody knows about. It turns out that this book was released the very month that we had that big uh, market crash. The banks were failing. It was, what, 2008, 2009. All the bookstores sent every book they'd ordered back to all the publishers and said, nobody's ordering. So my book basically just died on the vine. But it's still a darn good book. By the way, it has been reissued. You can now purchase a brand new copy. It's up on Amazon, folks. If you're interested or curious, as old... um, Use copies floating around. Some of them people have underlined and you never know what you're going to get. So check out the new one if this strikes you. It's probably my most uh, meditative book. It's really about a lot of big picture thinking. So that's why I chose it for this this, uh, shower thought today. When we look at our being, and this, believe me, it kind of dovetails into the future you stuff, but let's let's start with your being. So your body is really solid. 
You know, I mean, it, it, gosh, from our perspective, this physical perspective with eyeballs and flesh, it's like, you know, you can't just, you know, poke your finger through your hand. It's solid. And we tend to think of ourselves as being in these, what do they call it? Meat bags. (laughs) It's disgusting. (laughs) Meat bags of bodies in this meaty world. Yet, we also talk about things like your soul, your higher self, your higher guidance. And we, we often say, well, well, yeah, I've got it somewhere. And then there's the mental self. Then there's the emotional self. Then there's the energy body self. Oh, now it's starting to get very messy. If I was to draw all of these on paper, what would I do? Like the soul would be a little blob floating over there and... I don't know, the mental self would be like a bunch of scratchy, you know, ink going back and forth. I'd like you instead to consider what if the being that's you is really just layers of energy? We'll call it energy because it's a good word to embody an idea. We don't really know what this is made of. Quantum? Yes. Molecules, yes. Something finer and and lighter than all of that, just pure information, data, yes. It's made of all this stuff. So you look again at this body that you're in, this solid perspective we have, and we're tricked. It's an illusion that it is solid. It's really not. If you were incredibly tiny, like a, a, a little quantum spark, a little proton, a little neutron, a little something. And you encountered something like your own hand or the flesh of your body. You'd say, I'm floating in a galaxy of spinning information and molecules. There is so much space between these molecules. Wow. I feel like I'm, you know, in a spaceship. It's going to take me two light years to get from one molecule to another inside this meat bag. Isn't it kind of weird? Like, makes the universe sort of feel like that. Like maybe the universe is actually quite solid, you know, as solid as a human body. But our perspective is so minuscule that to us, it feels like there's these vast distances between everything. Imagine now what these different layers of you might be in such a world where things go from appearing solid to being very, very unsolid. Maybe the body is a physical self, a low note on the scale, right? The bass note, boom, way down there. Maybe the emotional, energetic self, right? There's a kind of flow. There's an energy that we feel. Maybe that is a real thing. And that real thing is just slightly finer, maybe softer energy embedded in this very physical body that you are, maybe even emanating outward from the physical body. Maybe it would keep going from there and you say, well, there's a soul self, right? My highest self, my consciousness, the part of me that transcends my physical body, in fact, goes beyond my physical body. When the physical body dies, this other part is still there. It's not physical. It didn't have to die. Why, why should it have to die? And maybe this part of you is like the highest, finest note, the way up there. So fine, so high. It's sometimes hard to see or hear. Feels out of our hearing range, certainly, in our physical body, but they're all, they're all smushed together like beads on a string. I'm a layer upon a layer upon a layer upon a layer. And this highest part of myself is connected to and occupying this physical self, but it's also not necessarily completely tied to it. Whenever I look at those old religious paintings, right? And you see Jesus, you see the apostles, you see the angels, and everybody glows. Everybody glows with heavenly light. And I think, oh, well, that's the higher self. That's the soul self. Of course, it's not just stuck inside the body. Why should it be? That would be weird. So they're just showing that's the aura. That's the energy of you, the soul you. 
in the body, outside of the body. So this is a very interesting and different way, I think, of understanding where all the pieces fit together. Meaning the soul isn't something that you just happen on when you die and like, oh, okay, help. Now, now I'm in the soul. You know, the soul is just hanging out out there, you know, watching me and judging me from a distance. No, you are beads on a string, a necklace, bigger beads, littler beads, littler beads. Little, you can't even see the size of the smallest ones, but it's all you right here, right here, right now. It really shifts the way that we encounter life because you start to think, I do some things for my physical body. What do I do for my spiritual body? Maybe I ought to do some things for it. Instead of being so relentlessly focused on this physical wor world, this realm, this body that I'm in, maybe I ought to spread the love around. That's why I read books that lift me up. That's why I take walks in nature. That's why I put like the funniest comedians on Netflix and laugh, right? We can feel when we're stimulating another part of us. So there you have it, my friends. Shower thoughts. All right, moving right along. There's one more concept that I want to introduce you to in today's episode. Again, this comes directly from stuff nobody taught you. In fact, this comes from chapter 27, Trusting the Universe. Now, I know it might feel like we're jumping around like three different big concepts. Slow down. Whoa, hold your horses. But they really go together today. Again, remember every chapter in this book, it's more like a manual. It's a workbook, essentially. I have prompts. I have self-exploration. Um, grab your copy, please. <laughs> please, please, please grab your copy. Anyone who gets it before the 25th, I am showering with extra workshops, hands-on. I'll be there live, um, flow dreams, all kinds of great stuff. So go grab yours right now. But here's another peek inside a concept. I call this the stingy universe versus the abundant universe universe. So here you're like, yeah, I'm cruising, making that future self. You've convinced me and I've got to give a little more to my spiritual self and give it some love and affection and do things for it. I'm cool. I'm down with this. What's all this about stingy and abundant universes? I'm talking a lot about the, I told you this would be very woo woo one this time. Many times when we are creating this future self, we place these strange and invisible limitations on what life can and will give us. Let's say you're percolating along, just whew, creating those emotions, like reshaping your energy being, your soul self, your whole self, letting life start to align and match you, putting stuff together outside you that you can encounter in the minutes and hours that tick ahead. But you're saying, ah, I don't know. I don't know if there's enough out there. I don't know if life would really give that to me. Maybe I'm not ready for it. Maybe I have to work harder for it. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't ask for that. Maybe I'll ask for that and, and I just won't get it. I call this concept the stingy universe. And, and I encourage you, the last thing I want you to do today in this kind of a big thought experiment of an episode is to consider if the universe is stingy, what it says to you is prove it to me. You've got to earn it. I don't have enough of this. So I'm going to give it to Sally Joe over there and Jim Johnny over there, but not you. They've earned it. You haven't. They've worked through their lessons and their karmic crap and you haven't. So they get it. You don't. A stingy universe is judging. A stingy universe doesn't have enough to go around. A stingy universe is telling you why you can't have it and what you would have to do to get it if it chooses to bestow it upon you. I know it's kind of ludicrous when I say it like this, right? But that's how many of us go forward. We think, oh, I can't have that. That'll never happen for me. 
Oh, that's crazy. And we're telling our universe all the time all the things it cannot do for us and all the reasons why it won't and shouldn't do it for us. Now, I don't believe in a stingy universe. I believe in an earth. I believe in a solar system, a galaxy, a universe, multiple universes where everything is on the table. I was gifted at birth with a lifetime. Hours and hours, thousands, tens of thousands, even, I don't even know how many thousands of hours a person's lifetime typically encompasses, but I was gifted all of those. The rarest of jewels, gifted. Now, do I suppose I had to do something to get this? Did I have to earn it somewhere before I was, you know, incarnate? Did I have to prove myself? Or was I just gifted it? The universe said, I can gift you this life. It's like a sand on a piece of sand on the beach. I've got infinite. Would you like one? And he said, yeah, raise my hand. Yes, I would. I want, I want a life and I want all those hours. And the universe says, great. Go see what you can do with it. So if you start with that very basic benevolence, and by universe, it could be God, source, you know, put it in your own prism of understanding, your own spiritual practice. But by that very basic gift, which is the biggest gift of all, why would I then think that it shrinks down and has nothing left to give me, or I have to earn it and work for it and won't get it? That's me thrusting up my resistance. That's not the universe. The universe is the same as it always was. It hasn't changed. It's saying, well, what do you want to become? What are you aligning to? Who do you think you are? I love that. Isn't that kind of fun, twisting that phrase from who do you think you are to who do you think you are? Because it wants to know. It wants to align to that. And it wants you to open yourself to that, to embrace that. What's possible for me? Everything. Do you have all the possibilities laid out in front of me, all the things I could encounter? Yes. Okay. Wow, that's big. I don't even know what to pick now. There's so many options. Great. Why do you feel like it's a limited supply of of choices? Start choosing and maybe in a few millennia you can... Stop choosing if you want to. What? Again, mind blown. But imagine if that was your relationship with life. I need something. Remember, the universe isn't saying, oh, I'm just going to drop tons of treasure in your lap, make everything super duper easy, never have to go through this whole life stuff. Universe is saying, ah, you're here with a bunch of other people and they're going to really mess things up for you now and then. Let's see what you do with it. Ah, and you're in a physical body, a thing that is by nature meant to break down and eventually go back to the earth. Let's see what you do with that. Oh, wow, humanity created some really competitive and weird systems. Let's see what you do as a a little, you know, pod in this whole humanity thing, interacting with all the weird stuff and social systems and economic systems they've put together and racial systems, etc., Oh yeah, there's lots of challenge here. (laughs) Don't get me wrong. But if you're actively going into the future self and you're saying, this is how I want to feel. This is the me that I am feeling, that I am developing into. And I want all right, good, correct, beautiful, benevolent things to support me in this. This is what's happening for me then really, unless you feel the universe is stingy, the universe will just align. It's just what it does by nature, by default. I hope this has been inspirational for you. I think it is the first part of our renewal. We are constantly renewing ourselves, constantly in a state of revitalization. Sometimes we just need more than others. 
So if you're listening today and you're like, oh, this really yanked on my little heartstrings, good, come back for more. It's all here for you. It's a way of thinking, a way of feeling, a way of encountering your day, a way of encountering your family, people you love, your future. It's your choice. So my darlings, I hope you enjoyed that. A little bit of an intense one. People have been telling me, you sound so much more intense in this new series. I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm older. <laughs> I am more intense. But I hope you can tell, still quite joyful. There we have it. I invite you again. One last time, I sure hope you will at least go take a peek at the book. Look for it. Go, go check it out on Amazon or Barnes & Noble or Goodreads or any place. Get it before it actually launches in the bookstores. Get it now and you can get all kinds of great and groovy stuff. And I might even get to meet you. You know, if you want to pop up on Zoom and talk with me, I'm right here. I will have special workshops just for you guys. Um, and they'll be small, right? I don't expect to have, you know, 10,000 pre-orders. So um, please go get it. And with that, lots of love. I will see you next week for another episode of Flow Dreaming. Still kinda woo-woo. Me School is happening. And it only happens once a year. This year, we're starting in September. And it is a wild and wonderful ride. In fact, last year, more than half of the students were taking it for their second or third time, which is crazy. What it tells you is that one, me school is epic for learning how to awaken or accelerate your intuition, learning to manifest at a richer, deeper level, and for creating those long-standing desires, making those things in your life finally real. And two, me school works. It just works. So head on over to flowdreaming.com slash me school. We are registering you right now. I really hope to see you as part of our me school class and one of the next people on this planet to graduate into their next level self. Again, just head on over to flowdreaming.com slash me school and learn all about it.